ChatGPT can write movie scripts, drop marketing proposals, and even write and debug code. So how will it change the future of work? I'm Varsha Meghani and you're watching Nuts and Bolts by Forbes India. ChatGTP has become a viral sensation with its ability to provide human-like answers to a wide variety of questions. It passed 1 million users in just 5 days of its launch, according to its maker, OpenAI. ChatGPT trolls massive amounts of information available on the web, from Wikipedia to Twitter data to news articles and so forth, reads them over and over again to memorize them, and then generates intelligent and coherent text in response to queries or prompts. This type of artificial intelligence is called generative AI because of its ability to generate fresh content. Much has been said about how ChatGPT can generate everything from exam essays to computer code. Sure it can, but it might not be 100% accurate, as Sam Altman, the founder of OpenAI, tweeted. ChatGPT is incredibly limited but good enough at some things to create a misleading impression of greatness. It's a mistake to be relying on it for anything important right now. It's a preview of progress. We have lots of work to do on robustness and truthfulness. So right now, the key benefit of using ChatGPT is its ability to save time, money and hassle on repetitive and mundane tasks. Ask it to draft an email for you, come up with a marketing proposal or write the code for a website and it'll do just that. In fact, we already use generative AI models without perhaps realizing it. Think of how Gmail finishes the sentences you type out, or how Microsoft Word auto-checks your document for grammatical errors. These technologies are also built on language models. But the difference is that GPT-3, the language model on which ChatGPT is built, is bigger and much better. believe that we will see a major increase in the kind of things generative AI can do this year itself due to increased data availability and improved algorithms. They say generative AI will soon become cheap enough and be available as a service to be used in business and everyday functions, much like electricity or the railways. So for example, it could help make automated customer service more human-like. You know when you're talking to a bot when, for example, the food you order from a food delivery app doesn't arrive on time and you register a complaint. The responses are standardized, but generative AI could change that, so you don't have to wait to speak to a human to get a relevant answer. Or it can serve as an intermediary between you and your computer. So instead of having to create a chart in Excel by yourself, you can tell your computer, hey, I have this data, can you please help me visualize it? The generative AI model will translate your request, talk to Excel and generate the chart for you. Think of sentiment analysis, where companies can get to know what customers think or feel about a product by scouring the web for feedback. Or drug development. It could predict which drug works best for which disease, saving time and billions of dollars. Or think of search. Microsoft is investing $10 billion in OpenAI over a series of years, hoping to incorporate the technology into its Bing search engine. That could potentially disrupt Google's business if, say, Instead of receiving dozens of links to a search query, we're directed to a bespoke answer by a bot. So any area with large data sets can be transformed with the help of generative AI. Even though generative AI technology is more advanced than anything we've seen before, there is a general consensus within the AI community that AI will never replace human creativity. It might do away with the routine, repetitive or mundane tasks, but that will simply free up time for people to focus on the more challenging areas of their work. With computer coding, for example, ChatGPT is able to replicate the well-defined aspects of it, but the real problem solving still needs to be done by an actual software engineer. According to Anusha Ramamohan, co-chair of the IET Future Tech panel, quote, I think every technology advancement replaces or reforms the labor world in general. There will be a lot of jobs or a lot of parts of jobs that may get redundant. But at the same time, AI is generating a lot of opportunities. For example, there's a whole industry come up to create training data for AI, to annotate and validate the data, which never existed before. 
Besides, you still have to ask the right questions. If you come up with the right questions, then maybe ChatGPT can give you the right answer." End quote. So, prompt engineer might well be a new job description. ChatGPT doesn't know right from wrong or truth from false, so it often hallucinates. That is, gives you the wrong answer, but does so with confidence, so an amateur might still believe it. That said, it's a matter of time before the model gets more and more accurate. Second, the models are only as good as the data they're trained on. If the data is biased, the model will also turn out to be biased. Microsoft's AI bot Tay, for example, was famously taken down in 2016 after some users taught it to make racist and sexist remarks. More worryingly, because bigger is better when it comes to generative AI models, the cost of developing such models can only be footed by large tech companies. That means power is concentrated in a few hands who decide what data sets a model is fed and therefore decide what we think and do. AI experts call this centralization and it's dangerous. While generative AI promises to be transformative, it's up to individuals and organizations to make sure the technology is used in a responsible and ethical manner.